Warning, this project uses voltages which can be dangerous if proper precautions are not taken. This video is intended for education and entertainment purposes only. If you don't know what you're doing, don't mess around with high voltage. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I built a shoe enclosed static electricity generator which allows me to charge my body to several thousand volts by simply shifting my weight. So this project was actually inspired by the channel Nighthawk and Light, and just as with their design, all the same effects can be seen, including the levitation of fine particles with the electric field. The main improvement, however, is that this design allows me to toggle the voltage completely hands-free and doesn't require any grounding wires running down my leg. So what we have right here is an overview of the entire build. And throughout the video, I'll be showing you what each of these components is, along with how to obtain it. But to start off, I'll be talking about this guy right here, which is part of the circuitry from the inside of an electric fly swatter. And what this will do for us is convert the steady 9 volts DC from the battery into a high frequency DC on the output, which we can use later on down the line. Okay, and so to get started, the first thing we're going to need is one of these guys. This is just an electric fly swatter. You can pick them up at Walmart or uh, any store like that, kind of like an outdoor store, somewhere like that. They're more common in the summer, obviously, but I try to pick mine up right at the end of the summer when they go on sale and then just buy kind of, you know, 15 of them at a time, get some nice looks from the store clerks. Anyway, so the first thing you want to do is just open up one of these bad boys. Um, you don't even have to take that off because we're not actually going to be using the mesh at all. But the first step is we just want to go right around to the back where the batteries go and there'll be some screws. Now, this will be different depending on your model, but you can see, sorry about that. You can see on this one, we have some screws here, here, and here, and on the inside. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove those. All right, so once we've done that, we can go ahead and look inside. Uh, and the first thing we're going to want to do is discharge the capacitors. Now, this should already have been done, but you can just go ahead and take any piece of metal and short it across these two leads here. There'll be the two wires going to the, uh, the mesh up here. You just want to put a screwdriver across and short them just in case your model doesn't have a bleeding resistor and it's still stored a charge. Because you can get a pretty nasty shock from one of these. Um, one of the worst shocks I've ever got actually has been from one of the capacitors out on one of these fly swatters. So be a little careful with that. But then the next thing we're going to do is take that screw out. And then we have the board kind of free from its enclosure. So we can go ahead and take some wire cutters. And you could desolder these, but... Uh, you know what, I've got my soldering iron here, and we can reuse these wires later, so I might as well just go ahead and give these a quick desolder. There we go. And, but then these, we, um, we really don't need anything on this side of the board, so no time, no use wasting some time, just go ahead and cut those off. And so now we'll have the board, and what this board is, is it consists of your input circuitry, a little transistor-based oscillator, a transformer, and then a voltage multiplier. However, this is a puny little voltage multiplier. We want something significantly better, and so we're gonna rip this off and replace it with someone like this guy right here, and we're gonna be showing how to make that in a minute. But we can remove all of this circuitry, and there's a highly scientific way of doing that. It's called turning it over and cutting the board in half. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can just take it, and you can see here we have the three pins of the transformer. Everything on this side, we can just Imagine just cutting right through. We don't need any of that. So you just want to line up your snips nicely and just kind of snip it and hope the crack doesn't screw up the important part. All right, so there we go. We can see it cracked across there. Um, and that was a pretty good crack. And then you can smooth it up, uh, even it out if you're uh, a little compulsive like that. So there you go. Now all we have is the transistor driver and the transformer and what this will do is it'll take our nine volts because we're going to plug a nine volt battery in even though this was meant to be run on three volts to 1.5 volt batteries we can actually run it perfectly fine on nine volts so that's what we're going to be doing 
So now that we have the transformer and drive circuitry from the fly swatter, we can step up our 9 volts to a few hundred, but this still isn't nearly enough, and it's also not a flat DC voltage anymore. So in order to fix both of these issues, we can use what's known as a Villard cascade, or voltage multiplier, which consists of several diodes and capacitors wired as such. So in our case, we're going to want to use capacitors with a value of 100 picofarads, rated for 3 kilovolts. And we're going to want to use diodes, high voltage diodes, rated for 20 kilovolts. Uh, however, if you can't find diodes with these ratings, you can always wire two diodes with a lower rating in series, which is what I'll be showing you how to do because I ran out of 20 kilovolt diodes myself. So here's just a quick time lapse of me making a voltage multiplier. So first I just grab the right number of diodes and capacitors, and then I cut the top lead off half the diodes and the bottom off the rest. Then what I like to do is suspend my iron from something uh, and tin the ends of the components and solder them together in the air because it essentially gives me an extra hand. Then when I have all the diode pairs, I start on the multiplier by laying out two of the capacitors and soldering the diodes between them. Uh, from there, I just repeat the pattern until I have all 14 stages, but it's quite repetitive, so I won't do all of that here. I'll just do a few stages so you get the idea. And then after I add a stage, I can trim the leads off the ends of the diode so that they don't poke out. So, believe it or not, that's pretty much all there is as far as the individual components are concerned. And now all we need to do is wire them together. But first we need to identify which two pins on the fly swatter board serve as the outputs of the transformer so that we can connect it to the voltage multiplier. To do this, we can just look at the bottom of the board and identify the two pins which are no longer connected to anything after we made the cut. So you can see that all of these pins are connected to the drive circuitry, which is what creates the oscillating voltage which drives the transformer. However, you can see these two pins here are not connected to anything, and so these will be the outputs of our transformer. Additionally, what you're going to want to do is you're also going to want to, if your transformer board has a switch on it, you're going to want to just bridge the connections on the switch uh, because we're going to be wiring our own switch in series with the battery. But once again, these two in this case would be the output of the transformer because they're not connected to anything else on the circuit. But one question which might arise is which side of the voltage multiplier do you attach to which output of the transformer? Uh, and you may think it doesn't matter because it's frequency, you know, AC. Um, it does, not because of the operation. It, it'll work both ways. But there's one thing which is important, and I'm going to demonstrate that really quickly um, just by hooking this guy up to the 9-volt battery here. And so if you hook this up to the 9-volt battery, what you can see is that this side won't do anything when I touch it to the case of the battery, but this side, this side actually arcs a little bit. So this is actually pretty important to consider because one of these outputs will actually be connected to your leg. Uh, this contact here eventually will be connected to your leg so that you can be charged with the high voltage because the high voltage on the multiplier is between these two outputs here. So the voltage multiplier will work regardless if you were to connect this guy there and that guy there or cross them over each other however you wanted. It'll work all the same. But once again, one of them is going to be connected to your leg. So if you were to connect this one, which is the hot one, quote unquote hot one, which arcs to the battery, if you were to connect that to your leg, then if the battery touches your leg, you'll get a shock. And based off of the design, the battery will be nestled up against your leg. And so to avoid that, to avoid this guy just shocking the battery and wasting power as well and shocking you, you just want to make sure that you see which one shocks to the battery and connect the other one to the bottom end of the voltage multiplier because that's the one you're going to be connecting to your leg. Okay, and so now we're finally ready to put all the circuitry inside a shoe. So when you have your shoe, you're going to want to take a knife and make a cut down the side of your shoe. Uh, and you're going to want a shoe with a slightly flexible tread so that it's kind of foamy and not rubber. Because if it's rubber, you're going to have a pretty hard time cutting through it. So I'd recommend the Nike Flex Run Edition. I believe this is the 2015 version uh, or the 2013 version. But once you've got shoes with a fairly soft tread, you're just going to want to take a knife, once again, 
and cut down the side of it. So like I'm doing here, uh, I'm just demonstrating now, this is already put together, but you're gonna wanna take your blade and just run it down the side um, until you separate the two parts of the tread. So you wanna separate all of the fabric above it from the tread below. So then when you're inside, you're gonna wanna take your knife and simply make another incision so that you have room to put the transformer board into the sole of the shoe. So then you can see I took some heat shrink tubing and made a little flap down here at the bottom. And this is to serve as extra insulation. I also coated the bottom of the sole in some heat, uh, sorry, in some electrical tape. And both of these are to serve as extra insulation. So to make the flap, I grabbed a piece of heat shrink tubing like this one and I just basically made a cut along the side of it and taped two of them together to serve as extra insulation and this helps to stop any extra arcs from going through the sole of the shoe into the bottom of your foot. Then the last thing you want to do is on the battery connector you want to take your positive lead, solder it directly to the board and then the negative lead is going to take a big detour around the top of the shoe to a little indent which sits right under your big foot, on, right under your big toe. So I'm gonna really accurate scientific model here. This totally isn't a real foot. Um, this guy right here, if we turn the fake foot around, oh look, it moves. It's really anyway, um, right here. So you have your big toe here. Um, you want the switch right there, and the reason for that is you can curl your toe, and that's how you push the switch. So you can do it seamlessly. And here, no pressure is gonna be on the switch. And so because there's no pressure on the switch when you're normally walking, it really won't false trigger that much, which is pretty good. So first of all, you want something which is a little um, easier, or a little harder to push. This is way too easy, and so it false triggers every now and again when I'm just walking, and you don't want that. Um, but to help battle that as well, what you do is instead of just putting the switch side up, you actually cut a hole, a little button-sized hole in the, the tread of the shoe, uh, similarly to what we did for the transformer here, and you inset the switch into the shoe a little bit. And what that means is you actually have to push down on all of the fabric around the button in order to push the button, and push the button down into the layer below it. And that makes it significantly harder to false trigger. Um, so that's a little trick to make that work. So finally, one more time, just to recap everything on the model. Um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to take your nine volt battery here and you're gonna wanna connect its positive and negative leads to the fly swatter board. But you don't just wanna connect the negative lead directly, you want to run the negative lead all the way around up here to a switch located right underneath where your big toe, kind of between your big toe, if your big toe is here and the rest of your foot there, you want the switch right between there so no pressure is applied when you don't want pressure applied. Then you're gonna wanna run this back down and right back into the board. And so that's what's going to turn the device on and off when we want to by either curling your big toe or shifting your weight. Then you're going to want to take the outputs of the fly swatter board and run them into your voltage multiplier, remembering that the lead that shorts to the battery is not the lead that you connect to the bottom because that will inevitably connect to your leg. Then, you know, we make the voltage multiplier as we detailed before, and we want a 14 stage voltage multiplier. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And so then the lead, which is on the output, the output will be over here. And the same side that the output's on is also the side that you're going to want to connect to your leg. And I'll be showing you how I make the connection to my leg in the next clip. But you wanna make that output go to the leg. And then oh, this is also really important, and I didn't mention this anywhere else either, but you want to make sure that the lead that you connect to your leg also directly connects to the battery. Because the battery can actually accumulate its own charge and then it will want to get to this part of the circuit and to your leg um, but instead of it going through you if you directly connect the same wire that's connected to your leg to the battery then any charge imbalances will 
eaves themselves out nicely instead of doing it through an arc and so you won't feel a thing. It's really important, otherwise once again you can get shocked by the battery, which not fun. So two ways that can happen, you want to avoid them like this. Then finally you take the other output of the voltage multiplier and run this to ground. And the way you do that is by taking your shoe and just punching a little hole right through the bottom and running a wire down there. And then you want to take a piece of aluminum foil tape and run it along the bottom of the shoe. And that will make a good connection to ground. This is also very important because it allows you to make that good connection and without it, it will not work. All right, and now that we finally have everything put together, the last thing is putting it on. So in order to do that, we just need some sort of strap here. And so what I like to do is take a piece of foil tape and leave the back on, and then put two pieces of Velcro on either side. Uh, and then in order to put it on, you're gonna want some pretty high socks. So you're gonna roll your sock down. Go ahead, put this on wire side down, and then just put the Velcro on like so. Now you can make your own strap however you want. I prefer using foil tape because it's pretty soft and really comfortable, and you don't even notice it's on compared to harder metal. Uh, the downside is it will break eventually. It's not the most durable thing in the world. So once you've got that on, the next step is going to be taking your shoe and just putting it on. So go ahead and do that uh, and leaving the battery harness and this connector exposed. Then what you want to do is take the alligator clip and feed it down into your sock like so um, and then roll your sock up. Now you'll be able to find the clip in your sock and clip it through the sock onto your connector. Now this is really nice because it means you don't need to cut a hole in your sock and the slight gap between this um, because the voltage is so high, it won't matter at all, it makes a good enough connection. And now finally what you want to do is take your 9 volt battery and tape your other part of that wire to the case ground and this once again prevents you from being shocked by the battery, uh, just a little bit of extra protection there. Alright, and then you can go ahead and plug the battery in and tuck it inside your shoe and then go ahead and lace up, um, tuck the wires in better and now you're ready to go. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and to leave it off I'm just going to show a few more of my favorite things to do with this project. So thanks for watching once again hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.